What's going on, friends? Welcome, welcome to another session. And in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about doing tactical pop problems and puzzles and the approach that I personally take to solving these sort of uh, positions over the board. So let's get started. So we're here on Lee Chess and we're looking at some, some puzzles here and uh, we're going to solve a few of them together. And our goal would be to get to maybe like 2200 or so in rating and then um, we'll decide from there what to do. So let's get started. So in this first puzzle that's in front of us right now, the first things I look at when I solve one of these puzzles or just tactical positions in, in, in general is I look at the most forcing moves. So which usually are checks to the king, captures, and threatening to capture a piece. So you want to always look for those kind of moves first. And as soon as you spot a, a, a move that is forcing, meaning if you make a move to, you know, you threaten either checkmate or you give a check or you threaten to capture a piece or you do capture a piece and your opponent only has one response to get out of that threat, only one way to avoid getting losing material or getting checkmated, you always want to start calculating deeper into that position right away. So that's a skill that you have to develop and you have to have a keen uh, sense of, of being able, you know, of knowing when you can't just coast through the game and you got to start really focusing in and calculating deeply. So in this position right here, there's captures available here, here. Um, those are the first couple of moves that we have to consider. So our bishop currently is under attack. We have to take that into account as well. Uh, as far as material balance, we have two rooks, two rooks. We have a queen to queen. We have one, two, three, four minor pieces here on the opponent's side. And we have one, two, three, and four minor pieces here. And one of ours is under attack right now. So the first thing we have to calculate is bishop takes c7. He will simply take back, and I don't think we have a follow-up in that case. What about a um, move like bishop takes c6? Bishop takes c6, and I don't see we have a follow-up in there either. Um, what else? What else? Let's look. Queen takes d6. Queen takes d6, and I don't see what our follow-up would be in that line. Knight b5, which threatens knight takes uh, d6 with a check, is pretty strong. And he has to find some way to take care of that. So this might be something that we might want to consider. Because this, if we can get our knight into that square, that would be super strong. Because the king's only escape square would be d7. After which we have a discovered threat of you know playing here and winning the queen next move. So let's start looking at this line now that we see something here. So knight b5, say he takes our bishop. Then we take knight takes d6, check. King d7, knight takes f7, check. Discover, check. And we're winning the queen after the next move. He blocks here, here. So after knight b5, what can he do to stop us from getting into this square on d6? Well, he can't move this knight because this is pinned. So that's not an option to protect with the bishop. Um, knight d7, if he plays king d7, then that's checkmate, almost. So that's not an idea. After knight b5, um, if he plays d5, We take. Well, after 9b5, he plays d5. We first take this one, maybe. After he takes back, then we take here. He takes, we take, and we're winning at least a pawn. But let's see if there's anything better here. Well, knight b5, d5, bishop f4, we're threatening this check on uh, c7 there. But in that position after bishop f4, he could probably play... He can't take our bishop because knight c7 is losing the queen after that because after that's check he has to take back with the queen to get out of check. Well, in this puzzle, let's, let's since it is a puzzle in a real game, of course we wouldn't want to want to move make the move until we know like all the positions, but we do know for sure knight b5 is the move we're gonna play. That is we know for sure is the best move in this position. So let's go ahead and make that move. So he took okay. I thought he wouldn't take, I thought he would play d5, but now we have a pretty easy answer, I think. Now we're just going to take this one with... 
and he gives up the queen, and yep, he won there. So that's pretty good. I wonder what would have happened had he played, uh, instead of taking the bishop, had he played d5. So yeah, we were correct. This bishop f4 move is very strong, after which there's just no way to stop this check from coming in. The computer says knight g6 is the best move. Um, hmm, it likes bishop c7. Interesting. Queen d7. Playing here. And check. And this is just very close to losing already for black. Look at this position. Devastating. All of our pieces have penetrated into black's position and it's just hopelessly lost. All right, good job. Let's go on to the next one. All right, so he just took one of our knights. So now he's got one, two, three minors to our one, two minors. Everything else seems to be equal. So immediately we have to consider captures, obviously, to get our piece back. But which way and how to capture is the question. So if we take the bishop now on d4 with check, he'll play knight to f2. And we're materially, we are even. But say we take the knight on e4 first, threatening his bishop. And if he takes our bishop on c5, we take back with check. And if he takes our other, our, our, our pawn, um, with the bishop, we take the bishop on d4. So that definitely seems like it's the right, right idea here. Makes sense to me. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and, and play this move. So now that he's done that, we're going to take this bishop with check and we're going to be up a piece. Very good. All right, next one. So he has just played queen to f2. So let's do the material count first. So he's got two rooks. We've got two rooks. We have two minors. He has two minors. Queen, queen. So materially roughly even. Pawn one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's some difference right there. So he has, excuse me, he has three or two extra pawns than us. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven. It's two extra pawns. So we're definitely down material here. So we've got to get something good going on over here. Um, so immediately I'm calculating all the checks and captures and threats. So obviously captures available here. So that's something definitely we should start, start considering. I also like the idea here. Anytime your your opponent's queen is kind of looks like it doesn't have that much squares to go to, you always want to start considering queen trap ideas. So already comes to mind bishop to d4 that traps the queen almost. I don't know if it does or not. We have to look deeper into this position. So rook takes h7 seems like it doesn't do much after king takes h7. So we're going to start calculating this move. So let's look at this. So after bishop d4, we're attacking the queen. Where will this queen go? Can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, can't take this, can't go here, 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 can't take this, can't take that, cannot take that. So we know that the queen doesn't have any squares to go, oh, can't go here. So we know the queen doesn't have any squares to go, so after bishop d4, what will he do? He's going to want to counterattack our queen. So he's probably going to play this move. So if we take his queen, he'll take our queen. But then we can maybe move our queen and continue protecting this bishop. And next turn, take the queen. So if we could play maybe like... Oh, I just realized after bishop d4, he can't play this because our rook would take bishop but then he gets out with his queen hmm well ideally i don't want to let his queen escape even though we are going to be up up a bishop in that case but it's not enough because we're down two pawns and we're only up going up one pawn in that case so i, I don't think that's the answer i think it's a little bit more than that after bishop d4 i was also looking at rook to f3 but if we do rook to f3 then he also has queen here escaping so that's not good. Rook f1 doesn't work. He takes it. So bishop d4. Bishop here. Queen has to stay somewhere to guard the knight. So I'm thinking maybe like...
queen here. But then he takes this and attacks our queen again. Bishop d4, queen c2. Then he has rook to c8. In that case, we might actually be able to just take the rook. After queen c2 also, I just realized, he also has bishop a4. Hmm. Tricky stuff. What about bishop d4, bishop a3, queen a1? No, that doesn't work because we dropped the knight. Hmm. Oh, what about bishop to e1? Oh, then we just drop the pawn. No, we don't, actually. Wait, bishop e1. This queen still doesn't have many squares to go after that move. Oh, that's bad. Queen f1. Because we're protecting, taking away the square from our rook to guard, so that's not good. So where will he go after bishop to d4? He will definitely play bishop to a3. I think this is, might be the move. So after bishop a3, queen c2. If rook c8, then actually we can play bishop takes f2. But then he takes our rook here. And then we move our queen away. Hmm. Bishop d4, bishop a3. Queen... c2. I mean, we can always just take the bishop on a3 and be up a pawn, but I don't think that's enough. Bishop d4, queen a3, rook, queen c2, rook c8. What about queen takes rook c8? Then he takes our queen, and then we take back with check. And then we pick up his queen next move, so that's got to be good for us. Because in that line we're gonna have, um, yeah, we're gonna have definitely a lot of material in that case. So but queen c2. So then bishop d4, queen a3, queen c2. So if he can't play rook c8, well after rook c8, queen takes c8. He can actually also take our rook or take our bishop on d4 also. But in that case, we can just take the other rook with check first, then capture his piece back. Hmm. Bishop d4. Bishop a3. Queen c2. If he plays bishop a4 in that case, then what? Hmm. 
bishop d4, bishop a3, queen c2, bishop a4. Bishop takes f2, bishop takes c2, and rook takes c2. We're definitely winning a full piece there, but we could have just won the full piece by taking on a3. Maybe that's what we have to settle for, is just taking the extra piece. What I'm saying is that we could have just won this bishop instead. But in this case, we're playing bishop d4, he's playing bishop a4. I don't know. Maybe in that case, oh, we could then we have bishop uh, queen d2 in that case. If he plays bishop a4. No, we don't, because his bishop is still already on a3. Bishop d4, bishop a3, queen c2, bishop a4. Bishop takes f2. Bishop takes c2, rook takes c2. We've gotten his queen and bishop, and we've given up just a queen. Anyway, we've spent quite a bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and play bishop f4 at this point. Or bishop d4, I'm sorry. Yeah, so this move came. Okay, now we have to think. How can we... I mean, we basically have two moves to consider. Either rook takes a3 or queen c2 are the only two moves that make any sense. However, what I'm thinking is queen c2... Bishop a4, bishop takes f2, rook takes c2, bishop takes c2, rook takes c2. If we take the bishop, are we up material? Let's see. In that case, we would have had two pieces, but down by two pawns. Oh, oh my gosh. After rook takes a3, his bishop queen is still trapped. No, it's not. Just kidding. Queen gets out. I feel like I like the idea where we're making him take the bishop back and we're taking exchanging down to an endgame. For example, after queen c2. If bishop a4, then we can always... Oh man, we, I just realized, after bishop a4, we have queen d1. No, we don't, just kidding. No other squares that I can think of that stays in touch with our knight that we can move our queen to. Or if rook takes h3, queen h4, and then we play rook back to h3. Nah, his queen is getting out to d8, e7, etc. So we just have to somehow hold on. I think I like the idea of playing queen c2. And if we're going to have to trade down and give up our queen anyway, then I would like to go into an endgame and do that. So I'm going to play this move. Ugh. What? I don't understand that puzzle. So what's what wrong with queen c2? I mean, isn't this the same thing materially? It's the same thing. He's getting the rook and knight. Oh, no, 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 no. He's getting too much material, actually. We're only gaining one point instead of three points in this case. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, oh my gosh. Makes sense now. Hmm. Okay. 
All right, let's go on to the next one. That was a good one. Okay. Kind of like the first position that we had almost. Not really, but something similar where our bishop was on g5 and it was under attack. And his king wasn't castled, etc. So what are some captures here? This is a capture. That's a capture. Does this check do anything? Check here, check here. Rook d1, attacking the queen right away. Let's look at the checks. Queen a4 check, bishop d7, rook d1. No, he's taking our bishop. Takes, takes, check, king f8. After check, he can always play king f8 as a matter of fact. The most threatening move right now it seems to be rook d1, which immediately threatens the queen, and bishop d7 is the only forcing move in this position. Then could we take on e6? He takes this, we take here. I don't know. I feel like we might have something better in this position. There is this pass pawn also, which is very annoying. I think if we take the knight, we're just relieving all the pressure in this position. So that just doesn't seem right at all. So I'm going to stop calculating this move, bishop takes e7. I'm, I'm going to start calculating rook to d1. Seems to be the most, most forcing, forcing way to play this. Bishop b6, bishop b6, there's nothing there. Bishop b5 check, he just takes it. Queen a5 check, he can play c6 even. So rook d1, bishop d7 is forced. Unless he wants to take our rook and then take the bishop. But he's materially down in a horrible position. So rook d1, bishop d7. I'm thinking in that position then, can we play bishop takes e6? It's got to be good. That just looks so good. And if f takes, queen takes e6. And he takes our bishop. Hmm. Rook d1, bishop d7. Oh, 95. Boom. He takes our bishop, we take this right here, and we have a devastating check coming up. He can't castle either. I like that. Let's play that. Just making sure one more time bishop takes e6 is not the right answer. I'm pretty sure this is the right move. I just don't see what he's doing after this 95. His bet, best, best bet might be to just to castle after knight e5, honestly. But that's just a losing position still. Because we're taking on d7 with the attack on his, either his queen or his knight, if we, depending on how we take it. Now, which way do we take is the question. I think knight takes. Intuitively speaking, I definitely I prefer the knight takes. But if knight takes, what if knight d5 happens? If rook takes queen c8. Bishop takes e6. Looks really good. Knight takes... If knight takes d7, then he has knight d5. Strong move. And our knight's trapped, and he blocks off our communication with the knight and the rook. In that case, we could take on d5 with the bishop. But for some reason, that just doesn't seem right. He takes, and then... We take back with the queen. 
definitely a strong position, but I feel like I think rook takes e d7 is just seems so much stronger in this position. Because of threat of bishop takes e6 next move. Completely devastating. I'm going to go with the rook takes. Yeah. So we got it right. Good job. I mean, this is really bad too, honestly. Knight takes is, I think it's pretty bad. Let's see what the computer says. Knight to c6. Interesting. Interesting idea. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now if I check anywhere. And there's queen takes. Yeah, that's not good. Hmm. Yeah, this position is not as good as I thought, maybe, for white. But, I mean, still, still pretty good, honestly. Yeah, this looks really good. I'm going to give this puzzle a thumbs down because both moves makes a lot of sense here, actually. All right, let's continue. We lost 17 points in that puzzle. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so... All right, so let's do the material count first. So two rooks to two rooks. We've got the queen, queen, knight, knight, and then we have two knights for it. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns. Okay. So let's look at the captures and stuff first. So no captures except for d5. What is he threatening? He's threatening definitely here, here. So right now, if knight takes d5 right away, forking queen and rook, what happens then? We also have to consider this fork. But then he has rook takes uh, rook to f2 check, picking up our queen, and that's not good. No, he doesn't. Just kidding. Rook f2, queen takes f2, queen takes, rook takes. So we've got two possible moves here, here. Knight takes d5, what does he do in that case? He's got to come up with something pretty good because we're threatening to just take the rook straight up. Not even losing the exchange, yet. we're threatening to just take the rook because if our rook, queen would also be attacking the rook after knight takes d5. And if this move, it just seems like there's so many ways he can probably get out of this. Because as soon as we take here, he has this open file to work with. So I'm going to concentrate on this move first to see what happens if knight takes d5. Does he have any way to save from losing the exchange? Or the rook, actually. The whole rook. Knight takes d5, rook takes g2. Check. Knight takes g2. Knight takes g2. Queen takes g2. Check. I don't see anything. Knight takes d5. Queen takes. And we can trade queens and then take the rook next move. And I don't see any follow ups for him. Knight takes d5, if you play something like queen to f7 or something like that to try to hit our rook, then we can take this for free still. Knight takes d5, knight f3 check. Pawn takes f3. 
his queen is hanging, so he's got to do something, and he's losing the rook. I don't see anything that he can concretely do after knight takes f5, so I'm going to go ahead and play this move. He wants to pile up on this square. If queen takes here, then queen takes g2. Oh, if queen takes, then he also has queen takes d5. That's not good at all. It's got to be knight takes here. Oh, man. I got it wrong. What the heck? Lose this move. If this, and we just blew our rook away. Interesting. What was wrong with knight takes f4? Oh, there's a check here. Oh man, <laughs> look at how complicated this is. Look at all this. <laughs> Man, just got to complicate it so quickly. Wow. Yeah, computer is correct. Definitely rook takes, uh, knight takes is too risky. All right, next to the next one. Hmm. Rook, 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 queen, queen, knight, 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 knight. Bishop, bishop, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. Cool. So right away, let's look at the loose piece in the position, which is this one. How can we try to win this loose piece? So immediately moves like queen c2, queen c3 come into mind, hitting the knight, and if the knight moves, we pick up the bishop. But it also comes to mind, knight takes c7, queen takes c7, queen c2. Nah, that doesn't work. He plays queen d7, uh, and he's in time. I was going to think about pinning the piece, but it doesn't work. So we got to start calculating these two moves, queen c3 and queen c2. So if queen c3, what about bishop queen c8? We have b5 protecting our knight and making his knight move. Then we take the bishop next move. So what's the difference between queen c2 and queen c3? That's what to calculate. Queen c2. And perhaps he might have... Queen d7 protecting it. Oh, there's also knight e7 protecting. But we always have b5 as a resort to kick this knight off. So in for one of them moves, something might be wrong. Thinking. I just don't know which of the two moves it is to figure out what's wrong with queen c3 or queen c2. Also, just curiously, one move that comes to mind is something like bishop to g5, hitting the queen first, then swinging a rook over instead. But after bishop g5, he might play f6. That ruins our whole plan. Super weakening move for him, but it does save material. All right, so look, look at each one. <sighs> queen c2 comes to mind, or queen c3 comes to mind because we're protecting the knight d4 square. So queen c3, queen d7. We also have knight takes c7, queen takes c7, then playing b5. I 
feel like queen e c2 just runs into lots of little discoveries like queen knight takes b4 d4 knight takes e5 but queen c3 what about knight takes e5 there but then we can take the bishop on c7 Oh, queen, queen c7, knight takes d4, um, queen takes, queen c2, knight takes d4, queen takes c7, knight takes f3, check, and he's ruining our pawn structure. So I think, I'm, based on that, I'm going to go ahead and go with queen takes c3, because I'm not seeing any. Queen c3, what about knight takes there in that position? You still do that. But in that position, we might actually be able to just take his knight our pawn I'm gonna play queen c3 interesting idea if queen takes c6 bishop takes c5 discovered attack think we can be okay because we can just move our queen away to b5 or something like that yeah all right next one we may not be able to get 2200 i'm getting a little tired guys so we may have to end a little bit earlier So immediately we see that we've got a rook and knight. He's got a rook and bishop. He's got an extra piece. Pawn wise, one, two, three, four, five. He's got two pawns. So if we can win this bishop, somehow if we can win a piece, we are going to be ahead. So right now, if we take the bishop, he's going to take our knight. That's the problem. So I'm thinking about some sort of a knight check followed by picking up the bishop next move. So if knight g5 check, king say f8, then bishop rook takes a6, then there's bishop to d4 check. And the next move, he's going to pick up our knight on g5. Now if knight to d6 check, Let's calculate that because that's a pretty strong move. He only has one one move, king f8. And then knight to d8 is, e8 is checkmate, actually. Knight d6 check, king f8, rook to e8 is checkmate. Well, let's do that. I like the idea of checkmate. Cool deal. All right, so we've got a couple of rooks. He's got a couple of rooks. We've got a bishop to his knight. We've got four pawns. He's got one, two, three, four, five pawns. So we're down a pawn. Now we know that if we can somehow make his rook move from the square, we have this idea of check and winning lots of material. So right now we can see that we have this idea of maybe a pin. Also, we see that bishop to e6 check. He can't take it because of check and mate coming soon. Right, so what could we do here based on these facts? If bishop f5, that does fork the rook and knight, skewer I mean, um, or a fork rather. So in that case, if he takes our bishop, does, do we have anything in that position? Do we have a check? He just brings us back. That's not going to work either. What if rook takes g7 check happens? Rook takes g7 check. Or rook takes g7. Then bishop b6 check, king h8. Don't have anything there. What about bishop h5?
You have to calculate all some moves like this, just winning the knight. But he just goes here. And if this rook to comes down, takes here, then this rook comes down. <coughs> I don't know, I feel like he can sacrifice the knight even. He's got a lot of pawns over here. We'll come back to that. Let's calculate bishop h5, see if there's anything there. Bishop h5. Rook g5. Bishop f7 check, king h8. Hmm. Doesn't seem like we're getting much from that. And if bishop h5, something like h4, he takes our bishop, then after bishop, rook takes g7, check king h8, we don't really have any more checks left. That's the problem. So now let's go back and start calculating these lines where we try to win the knight. So in rook to d2. You can actually play knight a1 also. And if rook to e1, then he can play knight b3. And what have we accomplished? Nothing really. I don't know. What about bishop d1? Tax the knight. Knight, say, goes to a3. Knight takes a3. I don't see what else we have in that position. Wait, hold on. Bishop's d1, attacking knight. Knight goes to a1. So again, we we don't have any follow up move there either. Dang, this is a tricky one. Oh, not seeing it. Oh, excuse me. Not seeing it on this one. Bishop h5, rook to g4. Five. Rook g3, then we have king to h2 attacking the rook again, and we're gonna he's gonna be forced to move the rook. So bishop h5, rook to g5. So then we play g bishop h5, rook to g5. Let's say g4. That he has to play h4 next move.
Bishop h5, rook g5, g4, g6. Packing our bishop. If rook takes h7, then G takes h5, and we don't have any follow-up moves there. Hmm. I don't know about this one. I'm not seeing anything here. Somehow we need to get this rook to move from this g file. How could we force that to happen? Bishop h5, rook g5, h4, rook takes h5. What about bishop f3 or the idea of bishop d e4? Bishop f3. Actually, he can take our bishop on f3 with a rook. Because it's pinned. He can't take back with the g pawn. Is the idea here maybe to draw? If bishop e6 check. King h8 is the only move. Then bishop f7 attacking the rook. Say rook to g5. In that position, he doesn't have to keep the rook on g file, I guess. I'm not seeing anything in this one. I don't know why I'm just going blind with this one. It's got to be some easy solution here. Let's see. Should be six check king h8. What about rook f7? If rook takes bishop, if rook takes rooks, then rook, rook d8 would lead to checkmate. So bishop e6, king h8, rook f7. He has to move his rook to anywhere on the E, on the first eighth rank. I'm not seeing how we're making progress there. What about bishop h5? Mm, no, bishop h5, This is such a hard puzzle. Wow.
Bishop f5, rook takes f5. Either rook checks on the top, rook blocks. Bishop b6 to king h8, rook to f7, rook to c8, for example. I'm not seeing anything. Then bishop back to f5. This moves his rook somewhere to g5, say. Bishop b6, king h8, f7, rook c8, bishop f5. Rook g5. Hold on a second here. Maybe we're onto something here. Bishop b6, check king h8, rook f7. Rook has to move to say to e8, then bishop f5, skewering the forking again. The Rook and knight this time with the rook not being there. Oh wow, brilliant! I think we see it. Let's play check. <clears throat> Let's play here. Oh no! <laughs> oh man, yeah, I thought we had we had came up with a brilliant solution there. Oh man. Was it this move? Oh man, now he can't take it after this. Because it's checkmate. Ah, uh, how do we miss that? Wow. Our idea was so good. <laughs> but it was, there was something simpler. Same concept, but just easier. If this, then e yeah, okay. So he has this idea. We're not getting anything. Hmm. That was a good puzzle. <coughs> the idea was to check, and then playing this so that if it, if he does take it, it's checkmate. Simple idea. Yet we missed it. <laughs> it was rated so low. Ninety seven. Hmm. So we have two rooks, two is two rooks, queen to queen, and then two knights, two knights, one, two, three, four, five pawns, one, two, three, four, five pawns. The material is even. So a loose piece in this position that he has is this knight right here, not protected by anything. We definitely have to consider that. We also have to consider the fact that his queen can be easily hit with our rooks. <clears throat> We've got some ideas of maybe forks here, also with the knights being so, you know, all over the place. So if knight takes here, threatening to actually take the rook, Queen takes, doesn't threaten anything actually. Already comes to mind, knight takes g6 as a sacrifice. If queen takes e6 after knight takes g6, then we could take his rook. But we also have a discovered check in that case, actually. For example, knight to f8 check. Winning the queen next move. If queen g6, then we're going to take the queen anyway. Oh, wait. After knight g6, queen e6, <clears throat> knight f8 check. 
King takes f8, boom. Doesn't do much for us. Knight g6, queen takes c6. The knight to f4 check. Knight g6, h takes g6. Most obvious move. Then queen takes g6 check. Looks pretty devastating. After king h8 in that position. I feel like we've got to have something there. Queen h6 maybe. King back to g8. At the very minimum, we can take his rook. Uh, I'm getting a little tired, so because I don't see any particular good response from him after knight takes g6, I think I want to go ahead and play knight takes g6. Wait, we have to calculate one more thing. Knight takes g6, knight f6. If rook takes f1 check, we have other rook comes back and takes. So that should be okay, I think. What about rook e1 first, hitting the queen? Then followed by that, knight takes. On e6, or g6 rather. If rook e1, he also has queen f6 in that position. I think he's holding everything together pretty well after queen f queen f6. Yeah, I'm going to go with knight takes g6. Takes with check, so we pretty much have to take this back now. So now he plays there. I wonder if we can take the queen, and if he checks, we take back with the queen. We will have one and knight. Rook and two knights versus rook and one knight. And pawns were even, so I think that's the right answer. If he takes here, he takes our queen. We take back, we'll have two knights to his one knight. Boom. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something and understood the thought process behind how I solved these puzzles. Hopefully, it'll help you in your games and calculations also. The main thing about calculating um, is just not being lazy with it. That's the biggest mistake that I'm trying to train myself to not do. Is also, we see a move, we see a good move, and we immediately want to play it. But we need to look a couple of moves deeper than that to see what happens after that. Yes, we see a winning continuation that seems to be a good move, but what's next? Is Does our opponent have something that maybe we didn't calculate? Just being able to calculate a couple of moves deeper than your opponent will make your game significantly better in terms of tactics, which is basically how games are decided. You know, any, as soon as you get over 2,000, that's really what, what makes or breaks your games at that point. It's just, um, yeah, just tactics. Your opponent being able to out-calculate you a lot of times is how games are decided. Thank you guys for joining, and I'll catch you the next one.